Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you how to solve trig equations of the form sine of kx equals something, cosine of kx equals something, or tan of kx equals something. Now, the difference between these and something like sine of x equals a half is that we're applying a transformation to the graph, okay? By multiplying x by this value k, which is just a number, we're either squishing the graph so it's more compact or we're stretching it out, okay? And to sort of demonstrate this, let's draw a sketch of a graph. So I'll draw, say, sine of x between 0 and 360 degrees. And that's going to look something like this. So we've got 360 degrees and 0 degrees. And this is y equals sine of x. Now, if I was to sketch on here sine of 2x, well, this is sort of squashing the graph, so it's twice as compact, it's twice as small. And so by doing this, okay, we can fit twice the period of the graph into this range. So it's going to look something like this instead, if I can try and draw it. So there we go. And so you can see we fit a whole period of the graph now in 180 degrees rather than 360. So it's squished it, so it's twice as compact. Okay, and that's kind of useful to know when we're looking at sort of these questions. So let's take a look at this first question here. So we need to solve cosine of 2x equals a half in the range of values from 0 to 180 degrees. And you can see I've drawn a sketch of this graph, y equals cos of 2x, between this range. And as I said above, it's been squashed, so it's twice as small. So what we could do to help us solve this is, well, we could undo that. We could stretch it out so it's the normal size, so we could look at cos of x. And rather than look at the range of 0 to 180, because we've stretched it so it's twice as long, we could expand our range. We could multiply our range by 2 and look at the range of values between 0 and 360 degrees. We could then find those solutions, and when we do, we could divide them by 2, and that would sort of apply that transformation again and take us back to the graph we're interested in. Now, that's, I've sort of said it all, so it might be a bit confusing, but let's do an example and hopefully it will make sense. So I'm going to extend this graph by 2 and I'm going to look at the normal graph of y equals cosine of x. Okay. Now like I said, because I've stretched the graph out so it's twice as long now, I'm going to extend my range of values I'm interested in by 2 as well. And so now I'm going to look at the range of values between 0 and 360 degrees. And we want to solve cos of x equals a half now between 0 and 360. So if I draw on a line y equals a half, it's going to look sort of something like that. <clears throat> And so in this range, we're going to have two solutions. We're going to have, whoops, we're going to have one here, and we're also going to have one here, okay? And so you could remember a value of x that gives you cosine of x equals a half, or you could do inverse cos of a half, and you'd find that it gives you an answer of 60 degrees, okay? So this first solution here is going to be 60 degrees. And because we've moved across 60 degrees to get to our set first solution, we could use the symmetry of the graph to find the second one, and we could move back by 60 degrees, and so 360 subtract 60, well our second solution is going to be 300 degrees. Now like I said, we've expanded it by 2 to get these solutions, so to take it back to the original solution we're going to divide everything by 2. So the first solution, so that would be if I draw another line on this one, so we're looking at this intersection here, well if it was 60 on cosine of x, on cosine of 2x we're going to divide it by 2 and we find that it's going to be 30 degrees. And by the same logic, this second solution, or rather than 300 degrees, is going to be divided by 2, and it's going to be 150. And it also kind of makes sense, because if we know that cos of 60 equals a half, well, cos of 2 times what takes me to a half? Well, cos of 2 times 30. Okay, so hopefully you can think of it that way as well, if it helps. So let's now look at a second example now. And for this one, we're going to work in radians, and we're looking to solve sine of 3x equals a half between 0 and pi radians. So remember what I said, I'm not going to solve that. I'm going to solve sine of x equals a half, okay, in the range of, well, I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So I'm looking in the range of 0 radians up to 3 pi radians. So let me draw the sketch of that graph, okay. So we've got our sine wave, so it's going to look something sort of like that. doesn't have to be perfect. And we've got pi radians, 2 pi radians, and 3 pi radians. And we're looking to solve when this is equal to a half, so that's on this sort of line here. And so you can see we're going to have four solutions. So to find the first solution, I could just calculate, well, inverse sine of a half, okay? And if I were to do that on my calculator, because I'm working in radians, so inverse sine of a half, I get that it's equal to pi by 6 radians. So this first solution is going to be pi by 6 radians. To find this second solution, I could use the symmetry of the graph and say that, well, 
I could start at pi and move back pi by six, and that takes me to there, so that's gonna be five over six pi radians. And now we could use the period of this graph, which is two pi radians, so every two pi it completes a full sort of, I don't know, period, I guess. And so I could use that to help me find the final two solutions. So I could do, well, pi by six plus two pi, that will take me to this solution here. So pi by six plus two pi, well, that's 13 over six pi. And then I could do, finally, I could do five over six pi plus two pi. And that takes me to this solution here, which is 17 over six pi. But remember, we're not solving sine of x equals a half, we're solving sine of 3x equals a half, which means I'm going to have to take these solutions and divide them all by 3. So we're going to get x is equal to, well, let's work it out, we've got pi over 6 divided by 3, which is going to be uh, pi over 18 as our first solution. For our second one, we've got 5 over 6 pi divided by 3, which is 5 over 18 pi radians. For our fourth, we've got 13 pi over six divided by three. So let's work, write that in. And we get 13 over 18 pi. I should probably just do this in my head, but I'm committed to the calculator. 17 uh, pi over six divided by three, and we get 17 over 18 pi. And if you wanna check that this is correct, you can just substitute them in. So we could put sine of three multiplied by 17 over 18 pi, and we get an answer of a half. So we could go through and check all of them and make sure that our answers make sense. So hopefully this was a useful video. If it was, like, subscribe and share and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.